Welcome back to the Forge, where two enter. One leaves champion, and one leaves beaten, battered, and bruised. This week we have two competitors who have displayed themselves in the constructed queues and tournaments. We have BCAM0991. Uh, if you have not played on the unofficial ladder for Soulforge, BCAM0991 has a top five place, and therefore... One of those delicious stars next to his name that I crave like a child craves candy. <laughs> uh, and our other competitor this week is Prototype. He has he doesn't have a lot of um, tournament success because he doesn't have that many opportunities to play in them. But he has been playing a long time, and I have had many talks with him. And yesterday, he punked me on my own stream. How dare he? All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the list we've got this week. So first of all, we have BCAM0991. And he's running what at first looks like sort of a standard zombie list. But Jake, when I look at this zombie list, I kind of did a double take and went, what? What What the heck is going on with this list? What do you think, Jake? Um, yeah, it's a little bit different <clears throat> than the zombie decks that you know you usually see. I don't think I've seen meta transfer used in a zombie deck to date. How about you? Yeah, I mean, usually to me, it's NT. So you're basically trading meta transfer for Spite Mage and Phoenix. That is the ballsiest trade I've ever heard of. Yeah, that doesn't seem <laughs> initially, at face value, like a good trade off to me, personally. But, I you know, see... I am a Phoenix lover, so. Exactly. I see what he's doing. I mean, meta transfer. Scales very well with race will. You should always be able to hit people with race will if you have it. He's got group meal. He's got epidemic. He's basically saying, I don't need spite mage. My removal is race will all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's an interesting idea that I look forward to seeing. But man, this guy's not screwing around. Like when I make a, a quote zombie deck, I use the good zombies. He's like, zombie? <laughs> yeah, man, I love zombies. Put all, all the zombies, zombies in. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to talk to him about uh, about some of his choices, especially to me, like, Fellwalker is kind of an odd choice. That's the one that sticks out to me is that one of Fellwalker. Yeah, especially since it could be a second Blightwalker, which seems like yeah. a great choice. Yeah. So, I don't know, I'm a bit mystified. It feels like it has very little removal. Uh, usually I run three Zrace Wills, three Blightwalkers, and three Spite Mages, so... Right. It'll be very interesting to talk to him about why he's made the decisions he's made. All right, well, let's move yep. on to Prototype's list. Now, Prototype is running... You know, you might see a lot of cards in here. This is a Doomwing deck. Uh, I have a very similar deck, and with the addition of Borean Mystic, you just have more and more redundancy in being able to move him around. Uh, you have the Mystic, you have uh, Invoker, you have Windcaller Shaman, you have Lightning Brand, you have Fervent Assault. Doomwing is moving everywhere all the time. Kill Doomwing and you're okay. Don't kill Doomwing and you are dead. Yeah, do I think? mean, you know, we, even, we played last night a whole bunch against your Doomwing deck. And it came down to... You know, if, if I'm playing a deck that can't kill Doom when the turn he comes down, I'm going to lose my board to him. And if you can kill Doom when the turn he comes down, it's a lot like playing against an easy computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty hilariously accurate description. Because <laughs> if you look at the bodies of most of these guys, it's like Cersei's one attack, Borean's three, Everflame's, Everwind's four... Uh, the Invokers 3, Windcallers 3, like, you, I've had a whole board of dudes and been like, yeah, I'm dominating, battle, that's like, 14 damage. I'm like, what? Yep. 14 damage? <laughs> How am I supposed to actually win this game? So, from my experience, it's been really great at board control if you can exploit Doomwing, but it's actually hard to win the game. So, it'll be interesting to see this matchup. Uh, to see who can sort of get their plan rolling best. All right, well, let's bring in our first competitor. 
Uh, we have B cam here. You think you know me? All right, on this day he does see clearly. He's B cam. How you doing, B cam? Hey, how's it going? Doing good. Uh, it's going well. We're we're curious about why you decided to to move away from not only the Tempe Spite Mage Phoenix suite, but people are also going Utera to get roars and Batanimates to set up Zrace Will and and make their board even stronger. You went Aloyan. So tell us. Why Aloyan? I think the biggest uh, reason why I went Aloyan <clears throat> is because you get access to Meta Transfer, which I feel is a very powerful card in combination of Virix and Bra uh, uh, not Zraswil. Zraswil. Because you get to, in level one, you can turn on your Zraswils, and not only uh, you turn on your Zraswils, but you're leveling up your, your Zemuses and your Dark Shapers of Ons, which are basically just blanks on player level one. So you're able to get utility out of those uh, those bad uh, level one cards and turn on your uh, race wheels because going through player level one and never getting his race wheel leveled up is like not a way you're going to win with a zombies deck because you're playing a lot of bad creatures on their own. But the fact when you get to uh, play, kill a creature then get a zombie into play, it's actually a really big benefit and which makes a zombies deck work. Plus, I like just a card in this meta game because like on the ladder, all I see is. Zemuses, Tarsus, uh, Death Weavers, so I just want to answer to that. And having just access to just a car is pretty nice. So that's why I went with uh, Aloyan. It helps smooth out your draws. And like a meta transfer level 3 can like shrink a Tarsus level 3 and then you can Zrathwill 1 it, so it's pretty nice. So. Yeah, I definitely like that idea. I think it's a really interesting call. My main question would be. Why only one Blightwalker? It feels like you've really limited the amount of removal in the deck. Um, like, I guess it's just really horrifying experiences with Blightwalker. Like, I've, every time I've played a Blightwalker, it's, like, done little to nothing. Like, it, it does kill, like, really big threats like Thunderswords and stuff like that. But um, I just did not have the greatest experience with it. Plus, even at level 2, it gets Zraswil 1, so that's pretty bad um, when you're playing a lot of zombie decks in the queue. So I kind of wanted to limit the Blightwalkers. And I think Fellwalker has some kind of utility since it has a decent amount of... It has three powers, so it can trade with some things, and then you still have a board presence afterwards because you, you are playing a couple of group meals, so you want some things to pump. And I just don't like having my Blightwalkers get dress wheeled. It's pretty bad. Okay. I guess I can understand. It just makes me a little nervous that you only, you're basically relying on... Race will as your form of removal, and so if they they're able to grow someone out of range of that. I fear for you. Yeah, it, I've definitely uh, lost to Tarsus Deathweaver decks without just a car on the field, just because they have these huge Zemuses, and I can't answer them. Okay, I guess another question for me: when I play zombies, I play less the zombies than you do, because I want to have more good cards in the deck. So I'm just curious if you've considered something like sticking in maybe two gargoyles in place of uh, the sham one of the shamblers and a fell walker or something like that or if you have decided that this is the correct number of zombies all right so I'm gonna come clean with you um, <laughs> I'm a relatively newer player I've only been playing the game for a couple months so I don't have access to all the legendaries so I, I like kind of like this a deck like this because it goes to show that you know I have success on the ladder even without having all the legendaries and it makes more casual players. Uh, it's I wanted to show casual players that you don't need ten legendaries in your deck. You can run three and still have a good chance of winning on the ladder because like hmm. all the zombies are commons and rares and there's a few there's a few key uh, heroics you need. But honestly, you can run this deck without Zemus and still do fairly well on the ladder. But Zemus just you know puts the deck over the top and makes it like a top tier deck. Okay, fair enough. Cool. All right. Well, good luck today, and um, I'd like to get a prediction from you. How bad they're gonna own prototype? Is it gonna be three zero? Do you think he'll win half a game? What do you think is gonna happen? Uh, I think we're gonna have a barn burner, just a full five game series, hopefully. Ooh. Just give the people what they want. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's bring like in. To hear that. 
in our second contestant today, Prototype. Prototype, welcome to the show. Oh, uh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Tiny and Jake. No problem, man. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your crazy-looking Doomwing deck. Well, I was actually inspired by you, Tiny, to uh, play mm. something like this. I'm always looking for something different to play that's not uh, something that's in the meta or just something different. And you played this move deck, and it looked really sweet. So, you know, I took the list, and you said, uh, oh, well, I don't like having Phoenix in here because of whatever reasons you said. I couldn't remember. So I'm like, what else has movement in Necrium and Tempes? And the first thing that came to mind was Cersei. And I'm like, well, that's pretty good because, you know, Cersei can kill things. It moves. So it's almost like uh, Doomwing 4 through 6. And uh, that's what I like about the list, is the fact that I'm running creatures and removal spells all in one. So I essentially have six uh, removal spells that are also creatures. Yeah, I'll be very interested to see that change. For me, Phoenix was filling a role of uh, I never wanted to play it just because there were other cards I wanted to play. And so it kind of felt, filled the role of like an underleveled removal Whereas it feels like for you, Cersei's going to must be elevated to a much higher position because otherwise she quickly becomes useless. So, are you basically leveling all Doomwings, all Cerseys when you see them? Um, I mean, it kind of depends on what the board has. Uh, I'm going to be leveling Doomwing and Cersei um, and uh, Windcaller Shaman uh, first because those guys are level gated. Everything else is fine under leveled. Uh, Thundergale Invokers can still move guys under level. The Mystic can move guys that are under leveled. Fervent Assault can add that. Uh, Ember Wind Invoker, you know, pumps my guys. Uh, I actually had a game last night where I had uh, double level two uh, Invokers, and my Doomwing just got out mm -hmm. of control to the point where uh, I don't think even a Krogius level three could have survived a hit from Doomwing. Wow, that's pretty good. All right, so what's your prediction then today? How, how do you think you're going to do against the zombies? Well, I'm thinking if I can control the board enough, um, then, I, then I can probably get the win. But if I draw very poorly, um, like if I don't draw Doomwings or Cersei's, then I'll be in a lot more trouble. Um, and I'm thinking either like a 3-1 or a 3-2 in my favor. All right. Well, All right. I wish you good luck, and um, if the deck does well, then yes, it you know I can see how you derived it from my deck. If the deck does poorly, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I never played a yep. deck like that. Totally different. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> All right, Jake. Let's make our predictions then. Who do you think is going to win this thing? Oh boy. Um, I think that I favor the zombies when it comes down to it. I think that even though he's lacking the removal, the Doomwing engine is going to be a little bit too fragile against the race will and the zombie, the ravening horde. And uh, and I think he'll come out on top. But I do think it'll be a close match like last week. Maybe not as close as last week. Well, Because last week was be decided close. on like three life points and half a turn. And uh, yeah, and in the fifth game. So, you know. Hopefully it'll be that close. That makes for exciting, uh, exciting watching. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, it's tough. I feel like this Doomwing deck is interesting. Um, he doesn't have anything to really take advantage of B-Cam's lack of removal. And all of his guys are already in Zrace will range. So I feel like that's going to be the difference maker. I definitely think that Prototype will get at least one maybe two games where just madness happens and Doomwing is bouncing around and blowing up all the zombies. Yep. Uh, but I do think the zombie deck is going to come out ahead. And what's interesting is I don't like the Shambler and Fellwalker, and I think they're going to be a big difference maker because when Doomwing goes over and kills them, 
they pop another body and then respond by killing Doom Wing. Yeah. Uh, and so it's kind of funny that those are the cards that I wouldn't run, and those may be the cards that are the absolute difference makers. Just to make me look foolish. Yeah, well, you know, it wouldn't be the Forge if it didn't make you look foolish, right? So that That's true. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, let's get on with the games then. I'm pretty excited to see how this works out. So uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, get this thing started? Yeah, let's get going. Get this party started. <laughs> you you want to sing anything while we wait, Jake? No? Yeah? We could sing Mr. Big Stuff, if you like. I've been <laughs> practicing. <laughs> All right. So, see, I think this is a difference for us. I would play uh, Borean Mystic here. I would play it right. in probably three, whereas I think he's going to play Cersei. So I'm curious sure. to, to see how that sort of difference will work. In fact, Cersei would be third choice for me behind Invoker and Mystic. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure how good Cersei actually is against the zombie deck when it comes down to it. <laughs> yeah, he did go for Borean Mystic, okay. Yeah, I think that's the right call. Yeah, I, <laughs> I actually agree completely, because I don't think Cersei actually does that much against zombies. And B-Cam is now reading Borean Mystic. What the <laughs> heck is this thing? Fair enough. I mean, I haven't played with that card very uh, much. Um, either, so... Uh, I mean, so this is my thing. If I have seen both of these lists, I'm playing Blightwalker here all day, all night. Um, because I know my opponent doesn't have... I guess my opponent does have epidemic, so I'm not. I actually wouldn't play him there, because he he could just epidemic it. Um, I mean, okay, so he can meta transfer level one of the good characters, yeah, and then play not, the other one, right? That seems like a good just idea. Play his wraith, yeah. yeah. And then it's really key that and Bcam knows this very well that once you get that guy to one, don't kill him. <laughs> Your whole plan <laughs> is to race Willem. You don't want to then block and kill him. You're gonna keep him there. <laughs> As fodder. And he was very smart not to go in lanes one or three and just get completely blown out. Uh, so if it's me, I'm going Borean Mystic 4 and playing a Doom Wing. And it's to right. me that's the dream setup where now I can do all of these bonkers things and just start oh, shooting yeah. him all over. I mean, you know, potentially you could triple trigger Doom Wing on the next turn. Yeah, it's basically my dream setup. Because even yeah. though. Like, he could put a guy in front of the Mystic. You can play Thunder Gale Invoker to move the Mystic, which to then lets it, you... Then move into the spot. Yep. Yeah, you can do all of these all crazy the things. Yep. Thunder Gale Invoker is, is very strong in this deck. I realize everyone's going to roll their eyes at that statement, but trust me, you, you'll get to see at least one moment where Thunder Gale will just wreck the world. Yeah, he gets work done. Which crazy I, as it is. To me, I love to see stuff like that where there's some card that is obviously awful. Just an awful <laughs> card. But there's a particular deck where it works really well. I like that. Yep. And it works good in here. And there we go. Doomwing. Bye-bye. Yep. The Epidemic comes down. He goes away. Zemus comes down. I'm and now not... he can take now he can take the Mystic off the board because he's still gonna have a Zoray's Will target for next. Yeah, time. that's true. Um, yeah, I mean the. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's kind of difficult because he could do cool things with the Mystic, and still be able to move stuff. But yeah, that works. This works uh, okay. I mean, he had a really. Yes. Oh no, never mind. He didn't. Okay. I, th I think you probably want to play um, Stormbringer here, though. Stormbringer, yeah, because I think you're going to need an alternate threat that can actually potentially win the game. Yeah. I mean, he had an interesting yeah. play there where he could have uh, made it more likely for Stormbringer to hop in front of Zemus by not Killing's Wraith. But I, th right. I think Killing's Wraith was probably the right call. I think Killing's Wraith is fine. Uh, you know, if, if the Stormbringer happens to knock off Zemus... Whatever, you know, it's a happy right. happy coincidence. Not sure I agree with that play. Um, he did get to level an extra card, but he could have already Zrace willed the Mystic and played two creatures here. Um, perhaps he wanted to make sure his Zemus didn't die for free to Stormbringer. Uh, yeah, I, I think that was the logic. I mean, it's okay. 
Yeah. You know, the longer that guy sits there doing five damage, like it's already done ten damage on this attack. So. Yeah, that's true. I think it probably was the right place. Just one of those things where I'm looking at it, and again, blocking the Mystic is kind of pointless there. Uh, takes away your race will target. Doesn't really do that much. Luckily, your opponent is just playing thousands of his will targets because that's his whole deck. Yeah, I don't know that he's going to be short on targets for his race will. Yeah, I don't. Especially, especially in the final turn of player level one, where your opponent can't play an Eben Skull as one of his cards. Yeah. So if this, he wants to play creatures, just... it almost has to be able to be his race will. <laughs> it's just hilarious. He's a double his race will. Oh, but he doesn't. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, well, okay, he leaves it because he didn't have a second zombie to play for uh, three. Yeah, I know. I, I might have yeah. doubled Drace Will anyway, though. I think negatory on that because I think he's going to be able to make good use of Drace Will even though it's going to be level one later. Yeah. Because with the leveled meta transfers, he'll be able to shrink, you know, right. well, much like right larger here, down into size. Had that been leveled, he would have been able to take out the Mystic play... Ah, uh, he has no zombies, but he could have then played... He has no played, zombie because Zemus isn't a zombie. But he yeah. could have played the Zrace Will and played a zombie, whereas here... I guess he can do the same thing. He can meta transfer to level Zemus and then Zrace Will. It's one less guy on the board, but... Oh, well. He's yeah, it's a, interesting. A so lot of cards okay. leveled. Yeah, as you can see in this hand. Oh, my God. What yeah, do you play? Is... Double Dark Shaper? I play Double Dark yeah. Shaper. Yeah, me too. Double Dark Shaper strong. I think here I'm playing... Yeah, it'd be interesting if he chooses to play his Wraith. Cause... Yeah. I, I think I go Ebon Skull Borean. I, I think I've seen enough of these race wills to where I kind of am tired <laughs> of playing awful guys. I just want to yeah. play some, some big play guys. Play some guys with some stats on them. Yeah, I'm wondering if in Game 2 Prototype will change his strategy and and go more hardcore for Evan Skull Knight. Yeah, possibly. And also, if he can get, you know, Ember, uh, Emberwind down, the Evoker, mm -hmm. to actually get some guys growing, maybe, yep. out of range of, of this race will meta transfer shenanigans. Although, you know, if something like this happens, nothing survives Double Dark Shaper. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was questioning putting the Dark Shaper in front of the Ebon Skull. But... Yeah. Prototype did level one Doomwing, and had he put it in three or five, and... It could be hit by Mystic. Yeah, yeah. and Prototype had drawn that Doomwing, he could have potentially killed them both. Because he could have right. done something like, you know, put the Doomwing in two, played Lightning Brand on it, move over, move to the other lane. So, it's, it's probably the right call to, to play it the way he did. It's a little risky, but I think it's probably right. Yeah. I think it's okay, even if they happen to you know pull off the trade. Okay, so uh, you know you still have a dark shaper on the board, so he's gonna move it out of the way. That's kind of interesting. That way yeah. he can kill a dark shaper. Yeah. Um. But see, at that point, your opponent's using a card to perpetuate the trade against one. Yeah, exactly. And you're still gonna have a dark shaper on the board, so mm -hmm. when it comes down to it, you know that's that's really pretty fine. For and you. he couldn't really play a Cersei because the Cersei then would just get diminished. And not actually attack. Yeah. And this this yeah. I mean, you can't play really Cersei well. into Dark Shaper boards. Yeah, I like this play. Yeah, a lot. he has the he has the combo here. Then he'll have an under leveled zombie to play for free. Yep. Uh yeah, it's it's pretty good. Yep. This this works out pretty well. Doesn't take any damage on the Dark Shaper. Sets up the trade next turn on the Mystic. I mean, that's that's not bad. Yeah, definitely very the solid. Under, the level 1 trading for level 2 is pretty nice. Alright, so here he's got what he wants if, if he wants to do it. Um, interesting. I think here I would have considered playing the Dark Z Doomwing in um, 3. I mean, right. he still can do this. Uh, battling, and then Thundergale invoking it over to kill the Shaper. Uh, sure. I think that's what I would have done. I mean, he can still do that. He can he can activate Mystic, move it, battle, and then do that. I don't know if that's his plan. He might want to get the Invoker down uh, to make a bigger Doomwing. I'm not sure what his, his thoughts are. Yeah, I'm interested to see what the rest of his turn is here. 
Yeah, me too. Looks. Okay, yeah, so he is doing yeah, that. Yeah, so he just moves over, then Thunder Gale is back. Yeah, sure. that's yeah. that's where Thunder Gale is very strong. Because he can do that again this turn, and basically, if that Doomwing doesn't die, it will kill something. It can reach every spot on the board between the Thunder Gale and the move. The only spot it can't reach is lane 4, uh, which has made me think about putting Soul Harvest in the deck so that people can't hide guys in front of right. something like Invoker. And so now, Bcam has an interesting problem. Like, do I do the Freeze Race will on the Invoker and play something in 4, or do I just leave him there so I can hide something in front of him? I mean, he really wishes that that group mail would put this race will in range of the, uh, the Doomwing. But yep. it doesn't. Exactly. It does not. It's close. Kind of. Sort of. That's interesting. Interesting to go for the Epidemic, but, you know, it works for sure. Not, I'm not sure I understand playing the Epidemic there. Do you understand why he played Epidemic there? He just has to play another card, and he decided it would be better to level the Epidemic than uh, the Shambler. Than play the, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I, I might have gone for some board presence there, but... I, well, look at it this way. The Doomwing's not dying. Right. Any board presence he puts down is going to die. Well... On Prototype's turn. I mean, not, that's the point. If he puts down multiple guys, only one is probably dying, unless he has some really cool shenanigans. Well, okay, but there's like 12 cards in his deck that are labeled as shenanigans <laughs> that cool, at that point. <laughs> that are cool shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that was really interesting. He invokered just to get him out of trade range with that zombie. So that was kind of a cool play. Yes, that's nice, actually. Problem is, he's Both just double dead. Growth. Well, now we see the big level threes coming out. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a really whatever huge... you want. This is that 3.1 spike turn that I've talked about from time to time, that when your opponent spikes really hard on 3.1, it's very difficult. Uh, and this is this was a very strong turn. Uh, yeah. I mean, and especially now, because this kind of turn sets up his next turn, because Dark Shaper 3 is just going to lay waste to whatever prototype puts on the board. Yeah, his only hope was to pull right here at Doomwing 3 and match that level 3. And he completely whiffed again. And it's going to be tough for him. We'll see. Maybe he can string something together here. But um, definitely worried for him. Especially since he can just play a level 2 spell. Then Zrace will. Then Zrace will. To get and into his Zemus. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is pretty terrible situation. And you're talking about double, double triggers off the Dark Shaper at that point. Like, Yeah, this is... Because he's playing two level two Necrium cards. This I mean. is really bad, and and really that was that the three point one. I got the best card of my deck three point one. You didn't. Ball game. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a huge spike. Dark Shaper three against level two cards is not a fair fight. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Um... It it literally almost doesn't matter what the level two cards are. Because Dark Shaper will kill whatever it is. Yeah, and it's really sad when you're having to play Thunder Gale Invoker as a card. <laughs> like, not as a utility yeah. card, as the biggest body you can find. <laughs> so it's Will, and... And Free Zemus. Is trouble. Uh, yes, this is, uh, this is over now. The damage on the board will carry through Prototype's life totally. Yeah. Yeah, there's the concession. Oh, All right, so that is one game up. Yep. Bcam zero nine nine one yeah, and see, the zombies. Bcam Slavery really more. had a good run there. Well, we're gonna go ahead and do a giveaway in a moment here. Let me. Uh, I forgot to activate Nightbot though. He's. Oh yeah. Okay. So we'll just take it like a two minute break in the game. So if you guys are okay with that, so we can do a giveaway. Nightbot. Nightbot man, you can't sleep on the job. What, yeah, what he's uh, letting you get, down. You're Jake Almighty or something. <laughs> okay, Jake <laughs> slept through the forge. One time. <laughs> it wasn't even like, a reference to that. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. He's in the channel now. Let me mod him. So you, best, you best behave yourself now. Nightbot's here. Nightbot's here. You see that face? You mean business. I wish you could name Nightbot because I would name him Batman. 
Batman. Yeah. That yeah. might be possible. And then he'd be like, I'm regular, <laughs> like every 10 minutes. It'd be quite fun. Okay. So for this giveaway, um, you need to say hi to Nightbot or to us, or better yet, predict who you think is going to win the Forge now. Uh, so I'll give you guys a couple minutes. You do need to be a follower of the stream to be able to be eligible to win a prize. So go ahead and do that as well. And we are going to move on to game two while you make your predictions. Tiny Grimes, uh, his nice guy days are over. There's no more giving away stuff to people who haven't followed. Whoa. Yeah. That used to be a thing. You used to be a softie. You are like, you know what? I really want to give it to you. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> that was before the dark times. That's right. Of my computer running so loud, my whole home is going to explode. Do you, do you have any good news in that regard, sir? I, I mean, a computer has been purchased. It's on the way. It's thanks on to, its way. Solely thanks to donations from people who watch the stream. Yeah. I got $15 and was able to buy the best $15 <laughs> computer money can buy. All right. It's, uh, it's got one of the scientific calculator interfaces on it. No, those are a lot more than that, calculator. actually, I think. Well, the graphing ones are way more. I have a graphing one. That's like a hundred bucks. Yeah, I have one of those. I, maybe I should start running the forge off of that. Yeah, we can try it. Yeah, next week the forge running from a graphing calculator. <laughs> I gotta say, this has been a totally different start to the game, right? He's playing guys with bodies that are at least naturally out of his race will range. Yeah, daring B cam to work for his race wills. So I don't know if this was intentional or if it was more just the kind of cards he was finding. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's at least somewhat it's intentional. You know, he's adapting his strategy. He's moving away from what didn't work last game. What didn't work last game was playing low-power guys onto the board early in the game. So the question is, is Epidemic the right play here? I think it probably is. I think it's fine. Uh, you know, Stormbringer is going to be in range of, you know, some combination of cards killing it next turn. Yeah, this is kind of a weird play. He could go Doomwing, Windcaller 2, move Doom, Doomwing over to kill the Shaper. But the question really is, is that actually worth it? Like, is it that worth it to overwrite the Evoker who's actually helping your Stormbringer stay out of range of problematic stuff? So he's got kind of a tough decision here as to how he wants to proceed. Yeah, I mean... Generally speaking, my philosophy is it's not worth it to burn, you know, significant resources to kill a level one threat that's vanilla like that. Wow, I don't understand that play at all. Yeah, that's that's confusing to me. I would have played the Mystic if I was going to trade the Doomwing, and I don't think I would have traded the Doomwing. I think I would have empty laned it and said, Yeah, I, I mean, really if it comes care. to that, you take four damage. Who cares? Yeah, that was, that was an interesting play. I mean, heck, let it attack four times and play on four lanes if you like. Take 16 damage. Who cares? It's play level 1. You need to focus on building up your resource base on the board and in your deck rather than trading yeah. 2 for 1 against a level 1 vanilla creature. Yeah, and he didn't he didn't get much value out of the Epidemic, and I don't really think Epidemic's that great in this matchup anyway. Oh, man, that was uh, a really unfortunate spot for Doomwing. That was the one spot he didn't want to, or to Stormbringer to go. Stormbringer, yeah. Because he wanted to go Doom 3, Thundergale 4. Uh, but I still think you can go maybe Doomwing 2, Thundergale it over. Uh, and take the zombie the, the for free. The problem yeah, is work. you are putting out to the board bad dudes and not leveling your Doomwing. So that's kind of tough. Yeah, I mean, it's tough, though, to just play two Doomwings there because... The level has rolled over. The epidemics are oh, back in Decam's deck. And we saw he did have one waiting. That was so brutal. <laughs> it was the level 2 one, and it you know, completely blew out the board. Zemus is down. Double threat. Oh, and he's going I back mean, this to one, the This epidemic one's getting level. out of hand fast. Uh, again, I don't think I would have played Epidemic there. I, I feel like Epidemic against... Maybe against Zombies it's better than I'm giving it credit for, but... I don't really think so. I mean... Sure, he killed a level 1 Zemus there. Uh, but the level 2 Zemus is still going to trade against whatever he puts in front of him, unless it's that Even Skull. Yeah, I, see, I thought he was going to put the Even Skull in front of the Zemus and maybe level a Cersei to kill the other Zemus. 
Right. That wouldn't have been a great play either, but I feel like continually going down the epidemic well um, might just be throwing good money after bad, as the saying goes. Yeah. All right, so he's going for the 50-50 shot. Come on, right. prototype. 50-50, kill the Zemus. 50 What lane do you put it in? Three or two or four? Does it matter? I don't think it matters. Uh, I would put it in two. Yeah, he got it. And he got it. Very nice. Very nice. Fortunately, B Cam's got the money. But uh. Uh yeah, shaper's good. He definitely is going to play that shaper. He saw last yeah, time. Shaper's, oh, shaper's going. That was in the five greatest comments. situation. That was the best spot <laughs> oh ever. Oh God. my. Oh, that's just brutal for poor prototype. He's like, come on, what do I have to do here? <laughs> oh, and then he loses the Stormbringer. Well, he uh, could. I mean, he get Epidemic, epidemic now. <laughs> epidemic. But the problem is that the Epidemic literally only accomplishes that. Yeah, it, but because of the Invoker, it lets the Stormbringer actually continue to grow. Yeah. Um, so from bad. that aspect, I actually like it there. Yeah, I mean, he's got a decent board up here. Takes Look up the Zemus for free. I like that a lot. Moving the Doomwing out instead of trading. Letting the Stormbringer yep. have, his, have his free kill. Have your <laughs> way with him. So yep. the question is, who do you take out here with the Embrace plus Will? It looks like he's going to target the Stormbringer, who's, who definitely has been the most annoying. Um, the problem is... Is he going to end up killing Zim the Doom? Yeah, he will kill the Doomwing out of it, so that's fine. I imagine he just plays the Shambler for the board. Uh, yeah, he'll just put the Shambler in front of the Doomwing. Yeah. And now we'll see if he can spike another Dark Shaper, because if he does, it might be ball game again. He didn't, so now he, he got... He didn't, so that's something. Kind of a blah 3.1. Well, I mean, he's got a 15-15. Sure, but it's not a game defining one. I think I would have put that Doomwing in four. No, actually one's probably better, so that way he could shambler. All right, not I think shambler, the 1550 is very relevant because it knocks off that evoker. The board is cleared. The Doomwing has died. Yeah, uh, no, I'm it it is very relevant. What I'm saying is it's not that three point one where it's just game over like last time. The the oh, Dark yeah, Shaper three point sure. one I mean, yeah. was such a big spike that it, it in and itself won the game. Whereas the Shambler is more annoying. Um, yeah, I would have been sure. really tempted to take the the one in four shot of killing that Shambler with a, with a Stormbringer. Really yeah, tempted. me too. You want to be very careful with your Stormbringer's HP when your opponent's playing uh, you know, Epidemics that are leveled, Dark Shapers, Varix Embrace. And, uh, and really, you know, you're taking three damage, not a big deal at this point. Yeah. All right. Oh, boy. There he is. That's going to hurt. Yep. And that all level one hand. <laughs> oh, God. That's going to hurt. prototype. Oh, uh, you uh, should tell Nightbot to do the giveaway, by the way, before everyone expires. Oh, yeah, that's true. Let's go ahead and do the giveaway. All right, here we go. Giveaway. Nightbot chooses. I think that's Germbug, actually. That's Germbug, right? Yeah. Yep. Congratulations, man. And if you won a code last week and you haven't received it yet, I'm aware of that. And you will be receiving it as soon as the show is done. Yes, we have received the codes Woo! from Stoneblade and they will be going out. Yeah, I mean, it didn't even matter what cards prototype came up with. That turn was going to be brutal, no he's matter what. got Doomwing. And I bet he's looking at that Lightning Brand and going, why couldn't you be a level 2? <laughs> Seriously, why couldn't you be a level 2? I would not have put it there. There's not a chance in Hades. There's not a chance in heck that it lives there. What is going on? Because <laughs> now, I mean, CD. he's shown you that he's willing to play every epidemic he ever comes across. Plus, Dark he gets Shaper a trigger triggers off. kill him. Yeah. I don't know. Now, now that Even Skull doesn't even trade. That just seemed like madness to me, but... Wow, this is... I think, I think Zima seals the deal here, because... Bcam is still at 66. Yep. Prototype has no board. That, and, and that evoker is nice, though. I mean, that could be a turning point. If you can find the right cards, like a level 3 Stormbringer, he can start bopping around and causing a lot of problems. Or he could just embrace Zrace Willet 
and then make his opponent cry like a little child. <laughs> That's also and yeah, there's the will. <laughs> Four prototype. My goodness. I think he wanted to kill his own Zemus there, but he he just he wanted to, to. But you know he could do it with the Dark Shaper next turn after combat, anyways. If the Zemus is still and so this is another small. thing we saw him level all these epidemics, um, and now they're kind of, they're worthless. And why would you hit the Zemus who was only doing eight damage? I don't. I yeah, know. see, I mean that that's the line I did. That's why I mentioned if it's still shrunk because I expected him to take the eight on the face. Mm, that's really weird. But uh, he might have been thinking he's too low on health at this point to do that. Um, I know for me, I would have continued taking that eight. Yeah, I, I would have taken it definitely. Um, you know, yes, you're low on health, but if you do it the other way and start throwing resources at that Zemus, you're never going to build the board that you need to actually yeah. beat the Zemus. That's, that's like how you beat race. Zemus. If you can shrink Zemus, it really puts a damper on what he can do. Yeah, because, I mean, you're going to get attacked by it every turn, no matter what. That's coming. <laughs> so leave it at 8 and take it and try he's, and race that damage. He's able to kill a Doomwing 3 just with Dark Shaper Trigger. Just with Dark Shaper Trigger. Well, yeah, it makes sense. It's only two triggers, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. He wants to do the Even Skull Knight, yeah, but he's but... not going to do it. He doesn't really care. He can take the eight, the sixteen from the Ebon Skull Knight. Yeah. I guess it would be thirty-two in the end. He'll probably block it. No, he'll he'll take it up next turn. Yeah. Either with uh, right. know, whatever he likes. He's gonna see another know. Doom Wing. I have. I would have to think. Yeah. Now he has to block the Zemus. He sort of backed himself into a corner where he's so low on health, and now that was another mistake possibility. Possibly is, is playing the Doomwing before seeing where the Zemus was going to pop. Uh, because now the Doomwing's definitely dead. Yeah. Like, the only way... Yeah, I don't know. Like, there's no way he wins a life total race from any point here if he can't stick an 18 power Doomwing on the board yep. and actually have it do damage. Yep. If he loses it every time, an example to, to playing it pre-combat there like that, then it's, I, it's not going to happen. I also think that was smart of uh, B-Cam just to ignore the Ebon Skull. You're so far ahead. Oh, definitely, Take the 18, yeah, yeah. It goes away. You just want to force the damage, care. sir. Yeah, you don't care. Now he's got Dark Chaper Epidemic to clear out the blocker. Actually, he doesn't even need to Epidemic, to be honest, but... Yeah. He might as well. Let's the damage trade Board right away. is gone again. I think Three. Prototype makes his move here and wins. Yeah? Right here? This would be, yeah, that'd oh, be like last week. I was wrong. <laughs> if it was last week, Prototype would have made a comeback from that spot. <laughs> For sure. Without doubt. Okay. Yep. Let's go ahead and do um, another giveaway. Uh, let's see here. So this time, uh, again, <clears throat> just go ahead and type something in chat about Maybe about how much you're enjoying uh, this particular match. Or or maybe how much you want Prototype to make a comeback. I don't know, one of the two. Yeah, I, I think Prototype needs to win a game here to keep this match going. Alright. Let's see. Come on, Prototype. You can do it. I'm openly it, rooting... Man. For my deck to steal one game from zombies. Oh, so it is your deck? I, I mean, I mean this deck that has this no connection deck. to my deck because it's lost twice. Uh huh. I think the difference uh, between it lost a lot more than twice last night. Just... Yeah, the difference between Prototype and I is I like the deck and I think it's fun. There's no way I would ever bring it into a serious format because I struggle to actually win games against serious decks with it. Prototype might not have had that problem. He might have actually been able to win um, some uh, some good, solid matches. I wasn't able to do that. Yep. Uh-oh, and Vcam has a little... Um... Okay, good. His message went away. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Leads off with Stormbringer. And race Epidemic's race will free zombie. 
in my storm <laughs> Oh, zombie decks. Why are you so annoying to play against? A perfectly reasonable first play in Stormbringer. Yep. And your opponent turns that around on its head and says, you know what? Thanks for the free cards, man. Yep. And Prototype says, flexing the muscles now. Oh, 8-8s. Eight eights. Straight swill Ds. <laughs> Screw it. 8-8s. Eight I, I bet he'll find a I'm way. Be... <laughs> yeah. Is he going to meta transfer? Meta transfer down, so Root that's a trade. Meal. Trade in late 5 with the Blightwalker. Yep, that seems reasonable. And there you have it. And now, Epidemic's actually reasonable, and Prototype doesn't have it. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. Finally, finally, B-Cam has actually played as one of Blightwalker. Yep. And Prototype doesn't have the, an Epidemic, finally. I think I like Invoker into Stormbringer here. But I'm definitely scared that it's going to be like, Epidemic, uh, Zrace Will, Dark Shaper, Womp Womp. Mm, well, luckily for him, there is no Zrace Will here. I think here, I would have been very tempted to double Dark Shaper. We've seen how dominant Dark Shaper is. I think I would have been willing to let that Stormbringer grow uh, just a little bit more to uh, get two Shapers down. Maybe. Epidemic has been really, really good for him. That's true. Because... I mean... Because prototype creatures are all on the edge of race will, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Epidemic really sets him up very well. That's true. Again, there he could have done the Doom Wing into the Thunder Gale trick. Um, I think I like this right. better though. Yeah, I think making the solid play steer works. Except works for he's gonna well. die. <laughs> Except for there's his race will coming down. But... I think Doom Wing just doesn't work in this matchup. Is is what it is, and prototype hasn't really adapted to that. But it's hard to adapt to that because it's your whole strategy. It's yeah, like... I mean he's missing he's missing a lot of the alternate threats that these decks have run in the past. Where like, right. okay, Doomwing's not good against this deck. I'm gonna play Phoenixes and Ember Wind Evokers yep. and just try and grow large mobile creatures or Predators. Yep. Lots of people run Predators in these kind of decks too. Yeah, and and I know for me, I would have just prioritized all three Phoenixes every round and tried to win off 2.4 Ashes. I just said, yeah, well, against this kind of deck for sure. I, I'm clearly getting owned. Let's try to soul forge gods <laughs> them. <laughs> uh, so now this is a real question: Do you play the Phoenix two or not? I think you have to here, right? I mean, you could epidemic, and it will wipe out um, this wraith, and it will allow your evoker to your. Uh, your guy to We're grow not talking about a Phoenix ringer. 2, right? What's up? We're not talking about a Phoenix 2, right? Did I say Phoenix? You did. Wow. Okay. Well, that's not <laughs> what I meant to say. <laughs> I figured. I got Phoenix on the mind now. I know. Okay. That's Clear idea. your headspace of the Phoenix. All right. I think that's reasonable. The only problem is uh, B-Cam has consistently demonstrated an ability to remove all doomings before they do anything. <laughs> Except for here. But he has a tricky well, play. Because he can go post-combat, stick the Dark Shaper in five, so that Doomwing can't actually kill it. Right, because he keeps the lane full. And then he can kill the Doomwing in one with, say, a, a, a Zemus, and reduce the Doomwing in two, so it's not doing that much. I think that's the play I would make. I right, don't okay. love it. So you but. pass on the obvious play of Zrace Will Free Zombie, and you just Dark Shaper, and then uh, and then Zemus in one. Yeah, I think blocking, that's what I would shrinking do. the Doomwing. Yeah, yep. Because that way your Dark Shaper survives. Exactly. Leave that Dark Shaper on the board. Um, I think that's how I play. I'm not saying it's 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 better than his play, but I think that's the play I would make. Because the Dark Shapers have owned the board so thoroughly. Uh, that is certainly tempting. Yeah, his line is very different from ours, and uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, I guess he wants to put it in the. M yeah, I would have definitely put it in the middle, not yeah. giving him a free kill. Not giving him the free kill. I, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand that. So he clearly I mean, goes. You're putting it down, doing it this way, you're putting that Dark Shaper down to die, but you could at least force him to take a trade if he wants to kill it right away, rather exactly. than just the free kill. I don't. I like. I don't agree with the line. Like Evoker two, Evan Skull four. I guess Evan Skull three works as well. 
either one. Yeah. Get that big ebb and skull down, and I don't know. He's he seems like suddenly he's in okay shape. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I disagree with how B Cam played that last turn. I yeah. think it really gave Prototype a big opening here. I think so, too. I, I think there he... should be a Dark Shaper on the board ready to tear these guys apart. Yep. Or at least the Doomwing should be dead. That should be the bare minimum. Yeah, you're right. Or if he did it his way but put it in the middle, then the Doomwing should be dead. Instead, he has to trade another level 2 creature for it. Oh, and he's got all these level 1s that would have been so much better with that Shaper out. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah. So now we get to really see some stuff going on where he can play the Stormbringer. It's going to start growing. He could even... I think this is the play I would make. Thundergale in one, moving the Evoker over, which grows it, then right. playing Stormbringer. Um, and then it trades off the Blightwalker. Or you could just right. eat the Blightwalker... With the Stormbringer by playing, say, Mystic by playing Stormbringer. playing elsewhere and having, yeah, having the lanes full. Yeah. I do kind of like growing that Evoker, though. Growing the Evoker is quite nice. Uh, yeah, especially because, you know, B we, know we know that BCAM has a level 1 hand and is not going to be able to address that Evoker on 9 HP without using two cards. Yeah, which is not that bad for him. I mean, that's, well, it's not that bad for him, but... It's a reasonable uh, I mean for a prototype. Problem. That's a, yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, yeah, exactly. He Nails the free kill on the Stormbringer, which is actually not a good thing. Yeah. Case because he would rather hit through for ten. Yep, definitely. Um, a fervent assault here would be nice. I think he has to play the Evoker. Uh, the problem is he doesn't have another play. He's got two dead in hand Ebon Skull Knights that die yeah. as soon as they get played. He has if he was lightning. Tiny Grimes, he would slam that that uh, that knight down on the board. Watch yourself. For sure. Let's and empty lane. Yourself, boy. You know, I've, I've seen it happen like five times now, so I am um, confident saying Tiny Grimes that, would play the knight here. I don't, think that, I don't think that's true. I think probably he should have Lightning Branded the Evoker before combat, but I actually don't even like Lightning Branding the Evoker because then it dies. I think I just it play dies the in combat, yeah. I think I just play this. Actually, you know what I do? I discard an Ebon Skull too. That's there you I go. Well, discard no, you put it, it on the board. Move but on. But if you were smart, yes, you discard it. And then say, okay, at least at least I got an Ebon Skull three in the deck that he can't really handle. I didn't even realize the life differential here. This. Oh my oh, goodness! It's, it's Look at huge. my play. So rewarded instantly. I call <laughs> that Soul Forge Karma. When you make the right play, the Soul Forge gods reward you handsomely. <laughs> With diamonds and jewels. With diamonds and jewels and a possibly a truck filled with gold. In your wow. Driveway. So now we see the 3.1 spike going prototypes way. He's like, yes. Oh, yeah. Now you are I mean, mine. he's got the Doom Wing against a safe board, relatively safe board. Well, it's never and that And he's safe. also got the Giant Knight in 3.1. Like, yep. that one actually has to be dealt with. You can't just tank it for two turns and then let it die. Yep. And, uh... B cam on the other hand kind of gets one of those womp womp hands. I mean, he doesn't have a great option here. So race will is not going to hit anybody. Ah, I meant anyone good. Anyone good, <laughs> yeah. Yes, it kills the two uh, four, but I meant I meant epidemic plus race will doesn't do that much, and an epidemic on its own doesn't do that much either. I uh, know. So BCAM's gonna take fourteen here for uh, sure. I kind of I feel really bad for uh, Prototype that he couldn't because he could have gotten a monster turn here. He could have gone Thundergale two, killed a guy, moved with Doomwing, killed another guy. But BCAM, like a jerk, doesn't have any guys out to die. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, a guy! Yeah, can you believe that guy? The nerve of some people. Yeah, seriously. All right, so at least we have a Zemus, I guess, and we can kill Doomwing, so that's something. That's something. He's on 23 life, though, facing down four lanes. I mean, maybe he gets lucky and it jumps in front of two or five. No, nope. nope. so he's taking the 15. He's going to oh, 14 man. life. Lethal man. in two turns, Don't barring. Like <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, God. that's uh. That should be it. That should be it. That evoker will be lethal alone. 
So he'll have to block it with something, and uh, he just doesn't have the creatures to do it here. I'd be pretty surprised. And the it's second this game there. ends, we're going to do a giveaway, because it's all queued up and ready to go. Senor Nightbot? He's ready. All right. Did an <laughs> There's the overwrite. <laughs> and the concession. All yeah. right. Well, good game. Let's, let's go. So, ahead. you know, that was an interesting one because I really think that BKM would have won that game if he had played player level two differently. The winner is Take Me to the Hill. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not willing to go that far because that 3.1 spike was really strong. But... Uh, you know, certainly had he played the, our line, I think he would have had a much better chance at it. Yeah, definitely. All right, so uh, as soon as the show concludes, I'll go ahead and send out your codes. Yeah, the codes will come in at the end. Take me to the hill. I don't think I've seen him before. Welcome aboard. Yep. Hope you're enjoying the Good show. Day. Because we certainly are. Absolutely. All right, so are you happy with your prediction? I, I think I am. This is about exactly what I thought would happen. Yep, this is basically what, what I what I thought. You know, a win for the zombies. It won't be a 3-0. Yep. I'm glad it's not a 3-0. Prototype will get at least fairly close. one cool game in. He's in a tough spot here, though, where he doesn't have any of the big boys. You know, he showed us last time a different strategy. But at least he gets to live the, the small dream. Not the whole dream. The, the small dream. dream. The baby dream. You got to kill uh, an irrelevant 4-6 Dark Shaper. <laughs> Which then <laughs> let him get Strike's Wilt. So, eh, you know. Yeah, what can you take do? what you can get. You, you take what you can get, that's right. But at least now he can play an Ebon Skull. I imagine he also plays um, the Stormbringer. Because he can play the Ebon Skull in 5, move Dooming over, and then he's got a 50-50 shot of just picking up the Zemus for free with a Stormbringer, which is, you know, pretty good. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. You know, you start adding up these free Ooh. irrelevant kills, and eventually, you know, it adds up to, hey, I did pretty good in play level 1. Yep. And Epidemic looks pretty good. And I think I would Zemus here. We'll see what he does. The nice thing with Zemus is it puts more zombies in the deck. I guess he's decided it's worth keeping his Wraith alive, which is reasonable. He's got uh, Regenerate, does more damage to the board. It's perfectly fine play. Zero four Stormbringer, go in hero mode. Hero <laughs> mode. Oh, so close to hero mode. Uh, I think here Good I would have played an Evoker. The Evoker 2... Plus, Stormbringer seems like one of his best chances to be able to win. It seems like, yeah, that's one of the things that has actually let him build a board later in the, yeah, the mid-game and on. Especially where he played those Evan Skulls, they're going to get only the one turn, and then they're going to die. So it's just, it's not that much he's getting out of them. Yeah, I mean, they're getting one attack in, and that's it. The one is actually, ended, ended up trading for the front half of a Felt Walker, and that's it. Yep, exactly. All right, now he's got an evoker down. I'm not sure I would have blocked the Zemus, though. I think I would have just put her in two, just tried to get something together. I mean, it worked out okay because BCAM doesn't have an epidemic for group meal. Mm -hmm. But uh, but even so, like, why risk it? I'd rather have the evoker on the board through yeah. the level up. Same exactly. way as like when you're playing WWP decks, you're trying to keep level one guys on the board to be grown in 2.1 by a by a level patriarch. Yep. Or but, like uh, Gox keeping him on the board for the 2.1 just for one for more shot. For the 2.1 to try and hit a level two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right. At least he's got an Ebon Skull. I mean, he really went all in on the Ebon Skull, so I'm happy to see that that at least that part paid off. Sort of. Yeah, I mean, they really did good work. Uh, last time, with their with the giant bodies in 3.1. Last time it worked very well. Really gave him the damage to close the game before he camp could come out of his low level draws and uh, and come back into it. Okay, I like that a lot better. I thought he was going to double embrace, and I mean he's got a level threats. So just leveling embraces won't do enough. So now, yeah. uh, prototype can live the dream again and go. 
um, Doomwing 4, Lightning Brand over to 5 to pick up an irrelevant Fellwalker. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's really tough because it might be your best play because he doesn't have a lot of options, but it's not that great. Yep, it doesn't actually accomplish that much. Yeah, I, don't, I think he does it. Um, at least, you know, it grows, it becomes an 11 7. It takes. Uh, I'll take five, I'll take him down to two, so even an Epidemic one kills it, so maybe you don't do it, but I, I don't know. I don't know what you do here. You, you're not in a great spot right here. Not in a great spot. I mean, the interesting thing I've been noticing about the Doomwing deck is it can't decide how it wants to kill things. Because he plays so many Epidemics, it's, it's like it can't make up its mind. Do I want to shrink things and kill them little bit by bit and then trade them off for creatures? Or do I want to try and knock everything off from full HP with a Doomwing? Right. That's and, how you know, I play. He's sort of trying to do both. Yeah, I know. But he's played so many Epidemics this match that he's sort of trying to do both, yeah. and I think it detracts from his, his odds at winning. Yep. I mean, I, I shouldn't say much because I lose all the time. So, <laughs> you know, like my, my, my great strategy hasn't exactly panned out. Um, if I'm not mistaken, could he have played that Zrace Will first, or was he a four? Oh, uh, the Doomwing was one creature out of range. Yeah, was, was the other one out of range? The other one was a 4-3, I think. Okay, so he couldn't have then. He, he had to do it the way he did it. Yeah, he had to, because it was level 1. And now, it's it's again, the Ebon Skull gets put down in kind of a tough spot where it's not going to gain that much. It's going to do 13 damage and die. Yeah, I mean, he's he's mostly playing it just to level it. I mean, yeah. 13 damage and level it to 3 isn't, isn't so bad when it comes down to it. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that. But I'm just saying, like... He went all in on a, on a couple of difficult times, and he just hit the value he's gotten out of has been very low. Yep. Stormbringer. Okay. Yep. So he nice. will get the growth off that because they have, Emberwind won't be dying this turn. Exactly. Um, the problem with that, I think I would have put Doomwing in front of him so that. Uh, Stormbringer could have had that chance to hang around and grow. Maybe you draw into your Evoker 3. Yeah. Whereas now, yeah. it's in range to die to everything. Yeah, because, I mean, what is the level 1 Doomwing accomplished in anyways when it yeah. comes down to it? I think I would have made that trade. Okay. We've got the 3.1. This is... Could be interesting because uh, B Cam got a level three, but Zraith level three to me is not that great. Like it's it's reasonable, but it's not that huge spike threat. Ebon skulls are. And so it's that... pretty good here though because A is going to regen twelve. Yep. Epidemic is going to wreck those Ebon skulls. Yes, uh, that that's true in this Flat particular out. spot. Yeah. Yeah, in this spot, the math works out where that yeah. epidemic completely ruins prototypes player level three, because those even skills are now gone from the deck, and wow. those were the cards that he was counting on. But he's he just immediately recovers with two well, more. Okay, he he hit the other half of his entire plan. Wow, that's very interesting. Wow. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, this not. could work out nicely for him. I don't think I would have done that though. Man, I think I would have tried to just wipe out this race with the Doomwing. Right. And just put Stormbringer... Rather than there. take the block and lose the Stormbringer. Yeah, I think yeah. I would have put Stormbringer there post-combat, taking the damage. I think the way he did it, I think that kind of lost the game for him. Kind of, because he was still at 85. He had a lot of life to work with as a yeah. resource still. Yep. And, and losing that Stormbringer is going to be a huge hit. Like, the Doomwing... Can't win the game on its own. No, no, it's just a board control card. It's and a board it, control card, and it'll do 18 damage. Right. That was great, time. but now it dies to Zemus. Yeah. Whereas he could have a giant Stormbringer now with that Evoker 2. A really two, giant Stormbringer. Followed by an Evoker 3, my goodness. That that card could have been utterly terrifying. Instead, yep. he's probably Oh, dead. that proc on Zemus. Yeah. Uh, at least he can... Uh, play the evoker and then wind caller away the other evoker so he's got a reasonable evoker but um, his race will is a bitch 
<laughs> that's just that's just yeah, a that's factual way to statement. Put it. So there's gonna be some sad times here, I think, for poor uh, prototype without serious will. Is the epidemic getting into range? Yeah, and he can reduce something with shape or two. Three trigger, yep. On the on the other evoker. Yep. Here and comes the will. I just can't help dark. think how big that Stormbringer could be right now and how dominant that would be. It would be very large. Let's put it that way. I'm gonna probably have to watch the replay. But I think and that it out, yeah. I think that was probably the defining moment. Although he did get a four point one Ebon Skull. That that could really help. Well, yeah, but at this point, okay, he has a life advantage, and the Evan Skull will help, but he's he's against the Zemus clock at this point. Yep. And he's not so high that he's going to be able to just ignore it completely because that Dark Shaper 3 in B-Cam's hand is going to handle a lot of what Prototype is trying to do to race the Zemus. Yep. <laughs> I, I don't know alright so he's thinking it through what's he yeah, want to do here it's a tough one I mean the problem is he doesn't have a lot of big bodies to kill um, Zemus but he doesn't really want to put Ebon Skull in front of him and then have him die to just about anything in the world wow that's aggressive oh, I, like, I it. like it I like it that was his only shot was to be like listen I'm going Full bore. And does it pay off? I think it does, doesn't it? Oh, no, it doesn't because the Shambler... No, no because go he's got block. double body from the Shambler, yeah. Yeah. It's, the Shambler's worth two blocks. Whoa, what What are you doing? <laughs> he's thinking about playing it, playing it super safe. Yeah, but that play doesn't work, right? Doesn't that just lose? Well, not after he shrinks the, the skull, the knight twice. Wait, what? I don't like, know. Like, he could do it either way. He could do Dark Shaper 3 into 4. No, I'm lost. Then... But why would you play the Shambler second? Why wouldn't you play Shaper 3 first and then Shambler? Yeah, I don't know why he played the Shambler first. That makes that makes no sense. Wow. I, Jeez. I feel like he had a pretty easy shot here. He goes... He just goes uh, level 3 Shaman or Shaper in 3. And then he yeah. plays the Shambler in 4. He gets an 8 reduction... <laughs> Bring him down to seven. Yeah, no. My point is just that either way he wants to do the lanes, because both ways work. He well, can, not he can this do it way. either way. This is but the one not way this that does not <laughs> This is the way that I'm not sure why he played the shape. I think him, I think that just must have been a blunder. Well, I, I mean, yeah, he I passed up on on a minus five minus five trigger. I don't. That that was. I'm not sure why. I guess it's not that important because. Either the dude's got the removal or he doesn't. Um, whether or not... I mean, the Skull kills it either way. And if he doesn't have the removal, he's dead to the vast amount of dudes on the board. So it's one of those blunders that you kind of get away with, and that happens sometimes in Soulforge. So we will pretend like it was a decision and not a blunder. Absolutely. <laughs> he didn't want that minus five, minus five. Uh, yeah. He didn't need that. It might have been a situation where he was intending to do something else. Like he had in mind he was going to make some other play. He made the first half of the play and then he realized it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. And I've done that before and it's really yeah. frustrating and you look so stupid and everyone's like, "Why are you so dumb? Why would you why would you play the <laughs> avatar second? And you're like, "Listen, I wasn't going to play the avatar, okay?" Uh, but it is you do want to think your your plays through all the way first so that you don't end up looking foolish. All right, and and uh, that's death. Yeah. Boom. All right, Vcam surviving, surviving a very surviving a three HP. Very close one. To take the series three one. I, I, zombies think, triumph. I think it's time to bring back. Cam. Oh, yeah. All right, B Cam. 
Welcome back hey. to the show, and congratulations on the victory. Thank you. That last play, um, I did the math wrong. I thought I was going to be able to shrink the, the invoker to a Zrath's will range so I could just get an extra play out of it. Mm. But, but I did I are bad at math, I guess. So <laughs> <laughs> I figured there must have been something going on there, whether it was bad math or uh, changing your mind halfway through. But I'm sure everyone in the chat just flayed you. <laughs> that's usually how it works. <laughs> But well, that's okay. Yeah. Because you know what? You can say, who's won the forge? Me or you? That's right. It was me. <laughs> I know. I could stick it to them. I got the forge win. It's all, it doesn't matter. If you had the removal spell, I would have died anyway because uh, I was at three. So it didn't matter, I guess, in the end. It yep. was one of those points where I was trying to go for style points and get that Zeras wheel going. Fair enough. Uh, so congratulations and... Uh, I do you feel like you proved there that the meta transfer version of zombies is the best version, or do you think it just happened to be a good mm -hmm. matchup for you? Uh, I think it was definitely a good matchup, considering like a lot of his guys are already in Zrasville range, just naked. But you def you definitely saw how Zrasville can combined uh, in level three to make like uh, level two. Uh, I mean, meta transfer with Zrasville can make uh, level two Zrasville's even good on level three. And that's a lot of value. That's what that's a way you can win games. Whereas like I was playing Botanimate in like a green zombies deck, and and Botanimate is just really bad because you have to level it with uh, with meta transfer. You don't have to level it. You can get value out of it because it's not level gated. So I I think this is slightly better than the green zombies version, but I don't think it's better than the uh, the red version. But the red version comes down to a lot of luck since you are playing uh, phoenixes and stuff like that. I just kind of want to play a more consistent game. And I think meta transfers do it. Yep. Um, that's why Jake likes the red version so much better. He likes to just play Luck Soulforge. He, he yeah. was really sad when um, <laughs> Phoenix got nerfed because now he can't just get his 2.4s all day and, and win. Yeah, win that's why like I that. advocated for the Phoenix nerf. Absolutely. <laughs> his whole plan is to do 30 damage to the face with Phoenix dying. That, that's his whole <laughs> game plan. Uh, well, congratulations again, Bcam. Uh, look forward to seeing you. Actually, let me rephrase that. I don't look forward to seeing you on the ladder. Whenever I see your name, I'm always like, oh, no, I have to play B-Cam. What? I, know, I, got, I definitely got the lifetime record against you. You do? Oh, no. See, I, I haven't been tracking that. I'm going to I'm have to turn this around. <laughs> hey, you're, uh, you're beating me on the ladder this time, and you beat me last time. So. Oh, so, I have the lifetime record on you, did you say? No, no, I have lifetime in okay. games, but you were ahead of me on the ladder last week, last month, and you're ahead of me right now, so. Okay, well, at least I've got something. I can hang my hat on that. Literally, after the show, I'll hang my hat on that. Um, all right, well, thanks so much for coming on, and congratulations again. And uh, some sort of reward will be wheeled up to your house shortly. Hopefully, it'll be Jake's boat, finally. I mean, he's been pretty stingy <laughs> about the old uh, boat. I don't even know how he can use it. Canada's so cold, it's all frozen. I, I assume the the ice <laughs> is all frozen, but but he manages yep, somehow. Year round, we don't even have open water. California, yeah. California. He he takes ice fishing to a whole new level. He actually drills a hole in the bottom of his boat and just fishes down through the boat. It's a cool idea, actually. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on, and uh, we will see you again next Tuesday for another episode of the Forge, where two enter. One leaves champion, and one leaves beaten, battered, and bruised.